you from the Exodus headquarters in Ohio. Let's jump right into today's episode. We are live here with Dan Infault. Um, today we're going to break down his sticks. So there's been a lot of um, uh, a lot of attention, a lot of interest. Um, there's been a couple production runs, and it's a it seems like it's been a craze on throughout social media uh, with what you're doing, the sticks and stands. Um, so yeah, let's just let's just break them down. All right, all right. So uh, this is the stick I developed, and uh, basically what I did was uh, I wanted to make myself a stick for the way I hunt, uh, a mobile system. I, made, I actually made a stick and a stand. A stand's going to come out later. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I wanted to develop something that fit my style of hunting. I wanted to have uh, double steps. I didn't want to have a step on one side, and I didn't want to have moving parts that make noise. Um, you develop squeaks out of moving parts. Uh, um, you know, they deform. They uh, If you, you move something back and forth, the bolt will wear a hole open. Uh, I, I put really super high tolerancing into the fits so that these things lock together so there's no play. Because if you get any play at all of this moving up and down, it's going to develop a squeak. It's going to open up these holes. It's going to make it worse and worse and worse as you go. And the same with this moves. Yeah. Uh, I developed a button that uh, is uh, space age plastic that is uh, as strong as aluminum but super light. It's almost no weight. Uh, I put the holes in here to make a 3D appearance and, and to reduce the weight. And uh, got this thing down to under two pounds and uh, made them s stack together in line. They fit into each other right in uh, the antler groove. I mean, that's our uh, logo right there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Um, as you've seen earlier when we were. Uh, climbing the trees out back. These things will rip a tree even on an angle um, where other sticks would flip out. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I do for a living is uh, I'm an R&D machinist. I invent things for a company. Now, generally, unfortunately, it's not in the hunting industry, <laughs> but it is what I do. So when I look at hunting products, I always see it from a different perspective. I see what right. I could do different to, to, to fix it or to make it fit me. Mm -hmm. And uh, this basically was built to fi fit my mobile hunting way. Well, there's a couple things that I noticed right off the bat, um, you know, when we were out back playing with these things on, on the tree. And I, I mentioned with some of the sticks that I'm running, the problem of, you know, you get these things strapped to a tree. And I'm the type of guy that, li like, I really like to space my sticks out. Like, I don't have a problem, you know, really reaching or pulling myself up. Um, some guys use those rope mechanisms, aiders, suaders, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call them. I just, I'd rather just muscle myself up. I don't, there's no sense of carrying extra stuff like that. And a lot of times the sticks that I'm running, you'll grab onto that bottom step and the thing will want to pull away from the tree or kick sideways. And these do not do that. No, they lock in. <laughs> they lock in. And when you grab, when, you know, when you're grabbing that bottom, there's, no, they're not pulling away from the tree. Um, and you had mentioned that that comes from your specific design, but button placement and computer programming that kind of really separates. That's one thing that I saw that really separates these from mm -hmm. any other sticks that I've used. And I have a, I have a bunch. I have sticks from XLP. I have sticks from Hawk. I have, I have all kinds of sticks. Um, so that's the, the first thing that I noticed when you're strapping these things on a tree. Another big thing is when you hand it to somebody, the shocker or the weight. I mean, that's yep. two pounds. Oh, it's super light. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're super light. What about um, step spacing? What's the d dimensionally? What are we looking at there? Uh, I think we're at. Uh, like if I remember foot? correctly, it's it's right at about two feet, yeah. tw twenty four inches. Uh -huh. um, and what we did was it was we checked with with different people and we found a, the perfect space. And that might sound a lot, especially to an older guy or to 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 somebody who's short. But really, um, I got bad knees. Works fine for me. I mean, if you take your foot and you tried going up to a wall and lifting it up to two feet, you'd say, "Well, that's probably too high." Right. But if you go in a tree and you're you're oh, hanging yeah. on a tree and you put your foot up there, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. You yeah. climb right up these things. Yeah. Yeah. What? Um, no, I, I I totally agree with that. A lot of times, uh, I've hunted with buddies and had I tell them, "Hey, there's a <laughs> there's a there's a set here. You can go hunt it. There's 
there's a, three sticks there, you know, 18, 20 feet up or whatever, um, you know, you don't need anything. Just you can go hunt that spot. And they come back and they're like, oh, I had to go back to the truck to get two sticks because, you know, <laughs> your your spacing's all crazy <laughs> and I, I couldn't get my, my foot up. So I, I think 24 inches is, I mean, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's a money spot for, yeah, for me. Thing. Actually, yeah. the, the first sets of these I made, I made for me, I, you know, uh-huh. with no intention of, of selling them. Right. And they were about this much longer. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my spacing is obviously right. more than most people, but I made these that'll fit anybody. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But yeah. still utilize that without having wasted weight with an extra step. Mm-hmm. So that's the, that's the whole purpose of this specific dimension is to, to cut this down to two, two steps to reduce to reduce the perfect weight. length perfect weight yeah right mm-hmm. right talk a little bit about um and you, and you touched on this a little bit but really break these the step design down why it's not a single-sided swivel mm-hmm. swivel step i know you talked about the bolt placement and the squeaks and, and whatnot but yeah we wanted to, to really lock in there and we wanted it to be two steps so that you get your feet on both sides of the tree. You're not hanging there on one foot trying to hang a stand. You, um, if, the, if the thing's on an extreme angle, you can put your foot on the other side for safety rather That's than having point. to have it over here. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are spots where when it's like this, I only use the one side on the tree. or There's a limb in your way. You can only use one, one side. Um, and really, it's real critical when you're up hanging a stand and you're at a height that you have several points of contact to that tree mm-hmm. so that you're not just hanging or dangling by one one foot and and then you're holding a stand with the other hand and what are you really holding on to the tree with and right. you're you're just you know relying on that that strap so basically it's a safety feature it's a feel good feature and it's you know for getting up a tree I want to go up a tree real quiet and stealthy you know and it put my feet on it real quiet and stuff. I don't want to have to put it to a position where I don't want it or, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just a slow, methodical process. Well, that's one thing, um, you know, with those single-sided steps that, or single-sided sticks uh, that I'm running now, a lot of times I, you feel like an acrobat hanging in the tree. You know, a lot of, maybe this is just me not being methodical <laughs> in my process, but there's times where I'll hang my first stick, second stick, and then all of a sudden I put that third stick on and the steps are all, they're on the wrong side, so now I'm cl- climbing back down because I want to climb down in the dark, l- searching for steps. I'm going back down, changing the the direction of my step, then going back up, and it's just so much extra time, so much extra noise, so much extra movement. And with a double-sided step, that just it takes that thinking process out of it. it simplifies, mm-hmm. simplifies. We really, we process. really wanted to get rid of the little plastic washers. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. They always develop squeaks or they crack. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, yeah. we just, we made it more of a solid design. We wanted everything to be locked together solid. And, you know, these things stack together. Uh, they fit to each other, into mm-hmm. these grooves. You stack them in a stack, put them right in the back of your tree stand, put a couple bungees across. And I can go and take that stand and the sticks and go up to tree and be up that tree in 10 minutes without making excessive noise or excessive movement. That's what I wanted. That's what I got out of it. Yeah. The other thing that I notice, and, and you touched on this, is just how tight the tolerances are, how well the step placement is. I mean, you look on the back on the back side of these things, and it's, I mean, this tolerances are, are, are extremely. I mean, they're pre- it's yeah, precision. it's right down to the thousands. Yeah, yeah this is a, an inch. This is a a, a well thought out design, precision components, standoff bracket. We even got a nice flat color, as you yeah. noticed. Yep. You know, we got them to, to be a flat matte color, where uh, for whatever reason, all the other manufacturers seem to be making shiny stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't want shiny stuff where I hunt. Why do you? I mean, there's so many. Um, you know, there's a lot of players in the game, but there's not a lot of attention to detail. Why do? Why do you think that is, in your opinion? I think uh, most people are marketing to just a general population instead of marketing to um, the high-end guys. I mean, the guys that go out and uh, pound it on public land and get it done, like us, are, are, are a rare breed. I mean, you want your stuff right. You, you, you want good, high-quality equipment. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that told me building this stuff, nobody would pay for the sticks at the price that it's going to cost you to make them to that amount of quality. And you know what I said? That's okay. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm building these for me. And if, if you hunt like me, you'll probably want a set. If you don't, you probably won't. But uh, other people don't want to build to that. They want something really cheap where they can make a high profit. They can sell a ton of them. Right. And uh, they don't pay attention to detail. And, and, you know, going along the route, you go to the manufacturer and you say, okay, I want you to, I want you to manufacture this. Here's a blueprint. I want you to make this. They come back to you and they go, well, you know, we could save you 10 bucks if you, you do yeah. this. And, you know, you'd be better off if you... No, this is the design I want. This is what I need. And other people cave into that. They're like, oh, ten dollars, you know, per stick on all these savings. Right. That's and a- I'm making ten thousand sticks. Right. That's a lot of cash. Right. Right. To me, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, they cost what they cost, and you either want it or you don't. It's not like you got to buy, you know, fifty of these and put them all over your property. Right. Uh, I got a property down the road, seventy acres. I've got about ten stands on it. Sets of sticks, they're all cheap stuff. Mm-hmm. They're made to silence and made to, you know, get in the tree quiet and stuff. Right. This is for when I go in mobile and I got to slip in on that buck and kill him, which is usually how I kill the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I'm hunting public where I got to strip down and put up every time I go in. Yeah, it's a one-time purchase for your lifetime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I look at I look at purchases like this as an investment. Like I am investing money in my hunting arsenal to to help make me a better hunter. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. my passion. That's what you, you know. I, I'll have a, a guy come to me and go, I, I can't fathom paying that for a set of sticks. Mm-hmm. I could have you know electrical tape around my my climbing sticks or, or my screw <laughs> yeah. steps or you know I I would never pay that. And I said, well, what do you pay for your bow? Well, thousand dollars. I got yeah. the best bow there is. You know, it shoots this many feet per second. Yeah, blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah. Well, okay. You know, uh, how often do you buy a bow? Well, every three to five years. This is a one in a lifetime purchase. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. And uh, you know, I'm not trying to sell a guy fifty sets of these. Right. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not even really, you know, trying to push this off on people. It's just what I wanted for me and what I needed, and a lot of people wanted it. Well, it solves a lot of it solves a lot of problems. Yeah. I mean, um, the shine, as we mentioned, of other manufacturer sticks, um, the single sided, you know, squeaking uh, steps, uh, the weight issues. Um, and, and you know what a good thing is too, you know even if we go nowhere with this or anything else, we're up in the bar. Mm-hmm. We're telling everybody you want to build good quality equi- equipment, get above this, you know beat this, yeah. because we're sick of the same crap coming up over and over and over. Right. You know, um, step up the the game. Mm-hmm. Hey manufacturers, you listening? You listening out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, competition. Um, it's great. It's, it's good for the consumer. We always the competition breeds success. And mm-hmm. if you don't like competition, then one as a manufacturer, you're probably not you're probably not doing a good job, and you're in it for the wrong reason. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would imagine, you know, you've been at this the mobile game forever. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've mentioned in other episodes. You're Sounds like a country song. I was mobile <laughs> before mobile was cool. <laughs> that's exactly. Well, that's there's there's Maybe a lot of truth to that. I mean. Um, you know, you know, what we were just talking about a minute ago about uh, the old screw steps. Yeah, that's literally how I was mobile back in the '80s. Yeah, I had those screw steps with electrical tape Which on. Which are them. a pain in the <laughs> ass. <laughs> a pain in the ass. Um, so this, you know, this doesn't happen overnight. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of thought that goes into this. A lot of tweaking of probably other products. Mm-hmm. Knowing, I mean, how long has that process been? Has it been since the '80s? On this particular stick, yeah. I mean, the, the the thought into what's wrong with sticks has gone back since uh, probably the late '80s, '90s. But or well, when sticks were developed. But you know, we've always been looking to up the bar. Uh, these sticks, in particular, have been developed for about four or five years. I mean, well before people were hearing about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and me and my hunting partner buddy Mario have been working on these pretty hard. You know, and. Uh, you know, you make a set, and uh, then you say, well, we could do this better. We could do that better. And I remember when he was the one that really pushed me to market these. He, he was like, everybody else is going to want these too. Right. And, uh, you know, I remember him saying, you know, at some point we've got to say this is good enough. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> every time we'd use it, I'd be like, well, I gotta, I, you know what? i got to get this weight down. Just this, you know, i got to yeah. do this. i got to do that. If we did this, we could, right. you know, but then we did eventually, uh, I got it to where I was actually happy. But I am a perfectionist with stuff like that, and I think that helps because um, even if, you know, as things come up, I'll probably want to change things. I want to probably want to make things better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there will be models down the road at some, you know, at some point where I'll say, you know what, I think there's something we can do to fix 
this issue, especially after we get these into thousands and thousands of hands, you'll start to see a trend of maybe something going wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it is fortunate that we have uh, 1,500 of them out there right now, and we have very, very, very few issues come back. That's awesome. You know, so, but I'm really happy with it, and I'm going to just keep developing forward. I mean, you know, and keep working on uh, upping the game. That's awesome. So these are $80 a stick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they can be found working. working uh, Hunt and Beast find. Gear, if you search that. We've got a Facebook page. Uh, we've got a website. Mm -hmm. um, you can get on a mailing list on there because, uh, honestly, uh, we're getting so overwhelmed when we release them. Every time we've released them, we've sold out within days. Yeah, that's um, awesome. So we're having a hard time developing them in time. We're trying to catch up to the problem and get them to where we, we, we have an inventory big enough to to hold over that, that crowd. But uh, if you get on the mailing list, you'll be the first to know, you know, um, along with everybody else that's on the mailing list. Yeah. But it, it'll, hel it'll help you because, there, are, you know, the last time we did the mailing list, uh, some of the guys got on the mailing list, and by the time they got on the website, they were already sold out, you that's know, incredible. by the time they got their email. That's incredible. But uh, uh, we should have more around uh, June-ish, July. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you get on the mailing list, you'll know right away. Awesome, awesome. Well... I uh, am thoroughly impressed. I mean, I, we've seen these floating around the internet, you know, the buzz about them. Um, but this is the first time I've I've held them in my hand. And I pictures and videos and comments I don't think do justice no. to what this what this stick is. Super impressed. Super solid. One of the probably most solid feeling sticks. It's the, the yeah. most solid <laughs> yeah. feeling stick. Yeah. yeah. Like I as I mentioned. Uh, mentioned before like the problem of sticks kicking out or pulling away from a tree um i don't get this with with this stick so 